Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Insider at Home, the show that brings you the very best in show jumping. My next guest is a team player as pure as you can find them. She, herself, her family and her team have set the milestone for modern show jumping. Those are not my words, those are the words of Ludger Beerbaum, the German Kaiser, when he was in the press conference after that first launching Global Champions Tour Super Grand Prix at the O2 Arena, the GC playoffs in Prague. She's also a true team member and a team fighter on the Prague Lions, culminating to a big win in 2018 at the uh, stunning Miami stage at the other side of the ocean. You know who we've got as our next guest? It is nobody else than Anna Kelnerova. Anna, great to have you on our show. How are you doing? Hi, thank you very much. It's really nice to see you, at least like this. Uh, I'm doing very well, thanks. Where are you at the moment? Uh, I, I see I see wood behind you, but I can't really put my finger on it. Where, where are you? Where are we recording this? Well, I am in the stables, as you might have guessed, uh, where I spend really the majority of my time. So just finished riding and doing this uh, recording with you here. Uh, that's good to hear. How, how, where, where should we uh, locate that, the stables? Is it near Prague, near the O2 Arena? Uh, it's uh, just outside of Prague, uh, quite close to the airport, actually, where most of the riders landed when they were coming to the Prague playoffs. Uh, so so not, far, not so far away from the centre. Um, Anna, your um, English is remarkably well. Sometimes one would even think um, that there is a hint of Jessica Curtin in there. There's, a, there's maybe even a, a slight Irish twitch uh, to the accent, but there's also um, a part of Anna Kalnerova that was based in England for, for a long time. Um, basically, your, your riding career even started in England. What's, what's that about? What can you tell me about it? Uh, it, uh, it, it did, basically, a little bit. Um, I, I did my, because in Czech Republic, you need to have a co competition license to be able to compete nationally. Um, and so I did my competition license in Czech Republic, but then for the summer uh, I moved to England and uh, competed there. Uh, I got to compete in Hickstead at the really small, small rings, small shows around, so it was an amazing experience. And yeah, I, I spent uh, one summer there and I trained with uh, Kenneth Clausen for a couple of years, so that's, that's my connection to England. Okay. Then um, you've, you've had a few uh, other um, Czech trainers who took you through all the ranks um, as a junior and young rider. And then Jessica Curtin um, who comes onto your path and you meet Jessica Curtin. How did that partnership start? Uh, it started, I think it's uh, four, four years now that we've been working together. Um, it was actually my mom uh, who uh, heard Jessica commentating uh, on the Europeans in Aachen. And uh, my mom, because we're really not a horse family, uh, she had no idea who was commentating. Um, and she told me that I have to come and listen, that, you know, this lady speaking, you know, she is just like me and she thinks like me and uh, that I have to find out who it is and meet her and, and see if uh, she trains and, and try and train with her. So it was actually my mom uh, who initiated um, me meeting Jessica in the end and calling her. When, when somebody sees the two of you, Jessica and you walking the course, um, discussing around afterwards, good or bad, um, uh, on site or off site, away from the showgrounds, uh, it, it does give you the feel that it's much more than, than a, a purely um, trainer-pupil relationship. It feels like there's a, there's, there's a lot of friendship involved as well. There, there really is. I mean, we've been really, we've been working for four years together and we, you know, four years is a long time. Um, and really, I think uh, I, I'm really privileged to call it also a friendship, you know, for sure. She's still uh, my mentor and, and uh, she really, you know, knows uh, and has the skill in the show jumping and helps me that way. But, uh, you know, uh, a lot has happened in the four years, um, a lot of ups and downs uh, in the sport and outside of the sport. And uh, we, I think we have a pretty uh, close friendship, or at least I would like to say that I do. I'm sure uh, she'll say the same. What has she brought to you? What, what is the, the one thing that she emphasized on that she made you work on? What, what is the, not really the Jessica Curtin system, but if you have to pick out one thing, like this is what I've learned, this is what Jessica brought me the most, what would it be? It would be horsemanship. Uh, if there's something that Jessica, you know, not only concentrates her training around, but her entire, I would like to say her life, her career, 
um, really, you know, points out something. It's, uh, of course, her career was extremely good and she had amazing results, but the horsemanship that she emphasizes, you know, not, not only in the training, but outside of training is uh, incredible. And, and the questions, you know, she's willing to ask about uh, the horses and what they need and what they don't need. Um, it's really, it's, uh, it's important and it really opened my eyes uh, because I was always uh, quite, you know, uh, caring and never wanted to, you know, step over the boundaries of what the horses could do. Um, but, but also, you know, in the sport, it requires a lot of work. Um, mm. So it would have to be the horse Yeah, Interesting to, uh, to hear. And of course, um, there is a thing or two to learn from uh, um, a, a launching global champions to a champion series. Um, sure. <laughs> um, during the 20 questions with, uh, with Edwina Tops Alexander, um, it was, it, there was a question about your, um, your character and you described yourself, and I wrote, wrote it down, as caring, passionate and stubborn. Um, pure by, by uh, coincidence, I asked the same question to Jessica. How do you think she describes you? Well, I, was, I would guess that she would say uh, stubborn also <laughs> because it's something we come across uh, during our trainings sometimes. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, she calls you ambitious. That is the number one thing. She also said in the same uh, WhatsApp message that you're extremely caring for horses and people. Um, so that, uh, that is a like. Uh, but she um, really emphasized on the ambition. You are an extremely hard worker, she says, um, and you're extremely ambitious. Um, coming as an under 25, rather, you're 23 now. Um, you've been on the tour since 2017, so three or four years ago. Um, so you come onto the tour and um, aged 20. You've worked yourself through young rider and junior classes, and you come onto the Longy Global Champions Tour and the Global Champions League. Back in the day, it was even the Berlin Lions still. Um, and you are ambitious. How difficult is it to make the jump into the deep end of the pool? Uh, at that point uh, in my in my show jumping career, it was extremely difficult. Um, it was the right decision, um, even though it was a difficult one uh, for Jessica to make because we've been uh, training together only for one year, and uh, you know I I was jumping at three star, four star level, a couple of five stars, but you know to really start at the global at the level, you know with all the amazing. Uh, athletes, riders and horses uh, was something that I, I was prepared for but not experience wise so there was um, a lot of letting myself down even though looking back at it uh, it shouldn't have been that way for me because I didn't have the experience you know to, to jump clear rounds so it was something that you know has to be developed but uh, I think that's where Jessica is right. My ambition was a little bit too, too much uh, for, for the situation. But, you know, the whole experience of being able to do it and, you know, jumpstart your career like that, to have the opportunity to watch the others and learn from them, even though you might not be doing so great, was something I would never be able to get anywhere else. So the possibility, you know, to, write, to, to start at such a young age um, was something I think that, you know, you could really see later on that helped me incredibly. Because you, you don't just compete at five-star level, um, you compete uh, at a team, a, a new concept, uh, innovative concept, uh, where, where riders from, from different nations come together in one team, a team that um, stays together throughout the entire season, uh, only five or six team members that always come back to the same shows. Um, so you, you not really live together with the team, but you see each other every weekend, and you, you fight for the results together every week. And there you are as a 20-year-old coming into the big end of the sport. Um, and you have to perform alongside those um, world-class athletes. Not only do you have to um, uh, level their performance, sometimes you even have to do better than them uh, just to keep the team uh, in, in, uh, in, in a good position. There was no, not really room for error. Did you feel a lot of pressure when you started? Uh, I did for sure. I think more more than anything, a lot of pressure from myself because, like you say, I really didn't want to let down the team. Um, I wanted to be there and you know support the team. And and uh, it, it's not like a Nations Cup series where you cross out the fourth rider. You know, every single result counts. Every single second counts. Um, so it's really a different system from when you're a junior or young rider and. Uh, you jump at a, a Nations Cup, a Young Rider Nations Cup, and the worst one gets crossed out, or even at a Senior Nations Cup. 
so it was really, you know, the determination and the ambition to jump clear, but not, it wasn't always the case. And what I have to say that, you know, the team, the, the Lions team, whether it was Prague, uh, Berlin Lions in the beginning and then Prague Lions uh, later on, thanks to Jessica and Akbar, there was always such an amazing atmosphere that even though I might not have performed that day the way we wanted, you know, the team was there and they knew that it was a learning curve and, and that, you know, at the next show I might do the, the clear round. So it was really the amazing support also from the more experienced riders um, and not the criticism uh, from them that really helped me, you know, push along and, uh, you know, in the end develop into slowly a better rider. Can, can you remember uh, in those early days, uh, 2017, um, you, you're about to ride in for, um, for the Lions. Um, you're nervous. There's a lot at stake. What does Jessica Curtin say before you go in? You, can, can you remember? How, how did she comfort you? How did she put you at ease? How did she boost your confidence? It's, she, she's very good at uh, noticing whether the rider is really on point and ready to perform or if they're a little bit, you know, above themselves and not really sure. And, and she's very good at either, you know, giving me a slap on the leg and saying, come on, let's do it. Or saying, you know, she, she sees that there's so much determination that she says, you know, just enjoy the ride, you know, and, and being able to exactly being able to analyze and see what the rider needs at that moment is also very important because that last uh, word can be, you know, a changing factor, especially when you're young and inexperienced and your emotions take the better of you. It's an interesting combination, actually. You don't have really one uh, team manager. You've got two because we're always talking about Jessica Curtin. Yeah. But uh, Eckhart uh, also plays um, a very important role. He was in Doha um, this year. I think he was in Monaco last year. Uh, he's at, he's at, uh, at several places. And though he doesn't stand in the spotlight like Jessica, he, he plays a big role as well as team manager, and especially in supporting that team um, throughout the whole season. Yeah, he really does. I mean, the two of them make an amazing team together. Uh, you can see that from the past, from their results, you know, from Jessica's results in the sport. And now, you know, from them being... Uh, you know, connected to the Lions team. Uh, he really, he, he helps so much, you know, because Jessica also sometimes has to be at a show with me somewhere when, when it's necessary for, for my building curve. Uh, Eckhart, you know, steps in and he knows the boys inside out. Um, he knows also what to say, when to say it. He always discusses it with Jessica. Um, and he's, you know, he's somebody that you can really lean on for support. So it's amazing to have both of them on the team. Prague Lions have been um, a very solid team throughout, uh, throughout the years, and, and uh, specifically in terms of team composition uh, during the transfer window mid-season or um, during the off-season, between one and the other season. You, you don't change the team uh, a lot. You, uh, you really keep the riders. You pay a lot of um, respect, uh, attention, dedication also to all the riders on your team, but you had some... Um, fantastic names. Jure Vrieling, Willem Vermeer, Niels Brunsels, Mark Houtsager, your, your fellow countryman, Alain Jopaterny, um, Sergio Moya is now on. Um, is there one of those, and of course, Gerko Schroeder, let's not forget about him. Um, is there one of those riders that really had uh, an influence, other than, of course, Jessica? But is there one of those riders that really taught you something, brought you something? I, you know, to be honest, every single one of them has. Um, it's being able to compete next to them, you know, talk to them, discuss the rounds with them, uh, or their, you know, opinions about the sport, about, uh, you know, getting the horses, you know, on point and, and understanding their mentality and everything. It's, it's always been an uh, incredible discussion. And I've had, luckily, you know, a couple of those with uh, all of them, whether it was with Gerko or Niels. Um, I really have to say that, that they've all always had something, you know, super interesting, uh, different perspective to share with me. Um, and it's great that I can, you know, also pick up the phone and if I'm not sure with something, because I am still young and I'm still, you know, looking for uh, answers and ways to do things, uh, that I can really, you know, call, call maybe Niels and, and say, hey, listen, you know, this is the situation. What, what, is, what is your take on it? Can you help me with your experience? And it's super that we have this amazing community that we can you know, really do this and, and we know each other. It's, uh, it's, it's not always like this and it's not even in some uh, uh, national teams that you have this type of support. So I'm really, you know, fortunate and happy that, uh, that we have this. So Prague Lions is more than a team um, that meets each other those three days at the show. It, you can also call them mid-season and, and say, hey, listen, can you help me? Yeah, it, it really is. I, 
Um, I'm sure other teams uh, have it like this also, <clears throat> but the Prague Lions, it's just um, an exceptional team. Exceptional team. That's great to hear. Um, Anna, uh, you came onto the tour um, in 2017. You had a great season in 2018. Um, one of the, uh, the highlights so far um, must have been the big win in, uh, in Miami 2018, um, where the, the Lions won their first ever um, Global Champions League stage. Um, 2019 was uh, different. You sustained an injury in, uh, in Madrid. And basically, we haven't seen you back on the league or on the tour since Madrid. 2019. So the question is, what have you been doing in the meantime? It was a long road of recovery. <laughs> I really didn't expect it. Um, I, of course, I knew that it wasn't just a simple injury, but I, I thought things uh, tend to heal a little bit faster. And I was hoping that by the end of 2019, I would be competing, hopefully at the pop playoffs. But uh, my life told me otherwise. Um, even though I was working like crazy to, to get it organized. Um, but I think in the end, you know, the, the body decided what was the best. Um, even though I put in the hours, it said, no, come on, I need more time. Uh, this is not the right thing to do. So um, for the whole of 2019, I was, you know, riding at home. Um, I also went, went out of the country for, for some holiday because... Uh, I am a little bit of a workaholic and I don't really, before I haven't really taken much of uh, holidays. So to spend some time with the family and, and, and my partner was also um, something that I did during that time. But uh, yeah, then later on in the year, I started riding again when the leg allowed it because in the beginning I was in quite a bit of pain. And uh, at the beginning of 2020, I finally was able to start competing again. So I competed in uh, Oliva. Uh, in Spain for uh, two times two weekends and that was amazing um, and now of course I was uh, slowly getting ready for the global but uh, we'll have to wait until next year. How, how frustrating was it um, wanting to get on, wanting to ride, seeing the horses, seeing them stand there in the stable, probably your, your home rider flat working them, maybe even Jessica getting on and you couldn't, you had, you had to stay down though you wanted, the leg said no, how frustrating was it? Uh, in the beginning, it was okay um, because I was, you know, it, it, was, a, it was a big injury. Um, I was on crutches for basically two and a half, uh, three months. So I wasn't even walking for a very, very long time. Uh, so I knew, you know, with the crutches and everything, I knew my head, I just knew that I couldn't. You know, there wasn't a, yeah, but I really want to. I just knew that the leg had, you know, had, didn't have the power to do it. So I was okay with, uh, you know, sitting down, watching them. I went to the stables every single day. You know, I was here all day, every day, um, watching the horses, cuddling with them, watching uh, Jessica once a week, you know, ride them. Uh, my amazing home rider uh, ride them also because, uh, yeah, they really did an amazing job at keeping the horses together. Um, but what was really difficult was later on when I got the green light from the doctors to start riding. Um, I attempted and the first few days it was okay uh, riding one horse. And then uh, slowly things kind of changed and, uh, and I started having problems and uh, the doctors didn't really realize how uh, demanding of a sport it is, even though it's not sprinting or, you know, playing tennis. You really have to not only use your muscles extremely on your legs, but also the pressure that you put onto the bones uh, through the landing and, you know, through the rising trot and sitting trot and everything. Um, I think nobody really realized how much pressure is, is, is actually put onto the riders and onto their bodies. So in the end, it was uh, a lower or a slower, um, you know, get back curve than I, than I wanted it to be. Did it tell you something more about um, the rider as an athlete? It did. Um, and actually, surprisingly, it also taught me more about the horses because mm -hmm. Uh, I always, you know, when I would be injured in the past, it would be a small injury, maybe a muscle tear or something like this. So you would organize it, uh, deal with it for a couple of days, maybe use some tape to uh, hold it in place. Yeah. Um, but what I really found with a bigger injury was that you might actually heal the injury itself, but there are other parts of your body that may be compensated um, and have problems now because of it. So you, you don't only deal with the actual injury, visible injury itself, but there it's a whole system that's really connected and, you know, also uh, really understanding that 
it's it's not just you know technically healed but but the the body has to be strong enough to be able to take it also and with the horses it's the same you know if they get injured um of course there's maybe one injury happening but because they have been out for some time you have to take into consideration the rest of the body and that they might be you know compensating somewhere else so it was a it was a huge uh, learning uh, experience for me not just for an, as an athlete but uh, in regards to the horses also yeah um, we are beginning of June 2020. Um, normally we would be traveling uh, throughout uh, Europe at this stage for the launching Global Champions Tour and the Global Champions League. Um, would you have been ready at this point to be on the tour and, and to jump the big classes and to be 100% um, for, uh, for the team? I would like to hope that yes. Um, I was for sure doing everything at the beginning of the year uh, to be ready, um, but to be quite honest with you uh, I got the opportunity at the beginning of the year to start training uh, with, with a physiotherapist that actually trained with uh, an Olympic athlete from Czech Republic before and only now do I really feel I, I thought at the beginning of the year that I felt good and strong and the difference now after this uh, physiotherapy workouts that I've been doing I, I feel so much stronger and actually even stronger than I've uh, felt before the injury so I would like to hope that by now we, we would have been uh, ready to support the team and you know travel travel the shows and, and be there for the Lions. Yeah, well, um, you've got, unfortunately, or luckily, however you want to look at it, um, you've got a few months uh, still to get even fitter and stronger. And then maybe um, we will see you in, uh, in Prague, of course, the GC playoffs. We said in the, in the introduction, Ludger Brebaum called it a milestone for modern show jumping. Um, your family is, uh, is very much involved in the head organizers behind the GC Play. It was a fantastic um, organization, fantastic event. How much um, are, are you involved in that, um, in that whole structure? Uh, as you said, my parents, especially my mom, uh, is extremely involved, especially around the show program that was put together uh, for the GC playoffs. Um, I was, uh, I wouldn't like to say in charge, but uh, really part of the core uh, marketing and, and uh, you know, getting the people, the, the, the Czech citizens who don't have something to do with the horses, you know, who aren't connected to, to uh, show jumping, uh, to get them involved and interested. And, and it was, uh, yeah, a, a lot of work from, from everybody in the family because uh, we're not a horse country, but I'd like to say that in the last three years, uh, it's uh, really changing and you can really see that even now uh, during the quarantine, uh, you can see uh, competitions being played on the main uh, Czech uh, TV. So it's uh, amazing how it has really changed and, and you know, the global tour and uh, I'd like to say the, the playoffs are a big uh, part of that. Um, 11,000 people, the capacity of the O2 arena when uh, the sand ring is installed, I think it was um, Twice sold out last year and, and three times in uh, in 2000 and was it 18? So I do think you did a, did quite a good job. You are um, an ambassador for your sport. I think you're the number two leading rider um, on the international FEI uh, ranking uh, of your country. Um, but you're a big ambassador for um, for Global Champions League as well. Do you think you've got an influence also on? Um, the, no, that as a rider you can have an influence on the development of your sport in your own country. Uh, I, I do think so, um, especially if you're not afraid to talk about it and be part of the, you know, the larger media uh, viewings. Um, of course, it comes at a price um, because then you're, you're not just doing uh, what you love for yourself, but you're also being uh, viewed uh, as, a, as a national athlete. Um, but, but I do think, especially in a country like Czech Republic, in a country that you know, before, uh, as I said, wasn't uh, so uh, into show jumping uh, to be able to, you know, through somebody uh, push that and push the sport more up and make it more interesting is an amazing opportunity because hopefully it also brings, you know, more interest, uh, a wider um, generation that starts to ride, you know, a young generation that gets interested or even uh, sponsors potentially, as we can see. At the Prague playoffs, you know, uh, companies that normally weren't involved in the sport now, you know, start to start to be involved, and and uh, it's it's a huge opportunity that you know a rider has to then take, not, not doesn't have to, but if they want to help the sport, 
um, it's the best you can do and, and uh, hopefully you have a, at least a little bit of a way to, as you say, influence it or uh, assist the interest in the sport. If the sport gives you so much, you should also give something back. Exactly. Um, I think those are what, what you said there. Um, many of those are also the goals of, uh, of the team back in, uh, in Valkesmaat, the spiritual home of, uh, of the Tour um, and the League. Um, talking about goals, it is going to be um, an off-season 2020. You can't put it uh, any other way. So let's look ahead. Let's be positive. Um, 2021, what are Anna Kalnerova's goals for the upcoming um, GCL and GCT season? Well, we have been planning with Jessica that uh, we really want to make sure we're ready for the start of the season. Um, of course, we have to wait and see where it's going to start. But uh, if it happens to start in uh, Doha, like it has for the couple of years, um, we will do everything to be ready and to be there for the team and, you know, follow them with the rest of the tour. Um, and really, you know, make sure or at least attempt to have the Prague uh, Lions team uh, as good as possible and then later on ready for the playoffs in Prague and you know really push to be hopefully by the end of the season and at the Prague playoffs in the top four as I'm sure every every team's uh, goal uh, is but uh, for us it's even more so because it's Prague and it's the Prague Lions and then also looking uh, at the Olympics. You, you've seen uh, how that has played out uh, now two years. Mm -hmm. um, top four of the regular season um, gets a pass straight into the semi-finals. Uh, do you think it is a, a, um, it's a, it's, is it a positive thing? Is it an advantage um, to go straight into the semi-finals? Uh, I, I, you ha you've, you've had two difficult seasons, two difficult GC playoffs in 2018-2019. Um, would you like to opt to go straight into the semi-finals or do you think that the road to the quarter-finals um, still is the better route to take? What do you think? It, it is difficult and I think it does really matter on the rider's um, ability uh, to keep a cool head and really understand that just because they're, uh, they finish the league in the top four doesn't mean that in the semifinals they get to go straight away, you know, uh, you know up. Um, it's, uh, you could see from the past results that uh, a lot of teams did burn. Uh, because they went straight into the semi-finals. And, uh, of course, the horses have, uh, and the riders, have less pressure because there is one less competition. But uh, as the rider, you have to be ready enough mentally for the pressure and uh, that you have to fight as much as uh, any other team, uh, whether the team has started in the quarterfinals or not. So I think it has to do a lot with the mentality. Did you analyze the rounds um, after uh, Prague 2018 where that one second was lost, the one second that cost you um, a place into the next stage of those, uh, those GC players? Yes, I mean, we, we looked at it. Um, it could have been one second or it could have been the one mistake that was unnecessary, you know. Uh, in the end, that's, that's what happened. Um, for sure, every rider that was jumping uh, for the Prague Lions really, you know, did absolutely everything they could to, to jump clear and to secure the round. Um, unfortunately, uh, it of course didn't happen and I was of course disappointed with myself also uh, because it was a huge, uh, huge deal for me to be jumping uh, not only at the Prague playoffs but also in front of my uh, home country, in front of my hometown. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I wish I could uh, re-jump that, but, uh, but I can't. And it makes me even more uh, motivated for the next uh, Prague films that will be coming up. Jane and Charles Phillips, um, who um, at the cost of Prague Lions, qualified with the Cannes Stars uh, for, um, for the semi-final in, uh, in 2019, made the same comment. If I could only re-jump that uh, round, then she's talking about her round in, uh, in the final. Um, that's, that's team-wise 2021. What's your goal um, as an individual uh, on the Longy Global Champions Tour? Um, you've, been, you've been knocking on the door. You've qualified for many Grand Prix. You competed in many, um, but not yet the big result. I think uh, 11th or 12th back in Monaco and in, uh, in London, which was a very difficult stage, by the way. Um, what's, what's your individual goal? 
for sure, um, as you're uh, hinting, it is to jump <laughs> a clear round in the Grand Prix. Um, I've dreamed of that ever since I started competing uh, in the tour. And it's what I will be working towards and you know, really wanting to accomplish in 2021. Um, it's not easy, as you can see. Um, of course, there are young riders that have accomplished that, um, and I really want to be, you know, a part of that group and be able to get into that jump off and, you know, start uh, pushing on the pedal and the jump offs. Yeah, that will be something to look forward to. Um, luckily, you've got a way. You've got a way to get there. The route is already planned. You've got Jessica Curtin alongside of you. You've got a, a good set of horses, and you've got a great exercise that you've um, you've drawn up for us. Tips and tricks with Anna Kalnerova. Um, something very, very easy. Anna, what did you draw up first? Uh, what I, it is a very simple exercise and I was debating whether sharing it or not, but that was the, really the first thing that came to my mind um, because it really helped me with, uh, for example, Silverstone, uh, who was one of the horses I you know, jumped uh, the Grand Prix and the Global Champions uh, you know, competitions with. Um, it is two sets of, uh, it's two verticals uh, on one stride mm -hmm. and normally I would put it on uh, the short side of an arena uh, to make the horse, you know, uh, and the rider bend a little bit and, and ride through the turn a little bit more. Um, you can come it from any side and basically you ride it a little bit in a figure of eight. Um, the reason why I chose it is because even though this opinion or my opinion might change in the future as I gain more experience, I really think that, you know, the balance of the horse and the rider is, is absolutely key because if you need to gallop, you know, in a jump off to the last uh, uh, vertical, you need to be able to just shift your shoulders back and the horse needs to feel it and balance himself out and, you know, get ready, you know, to, to be, you know, to jump the last fence or in a short turn, you know, where you're going against the clock. Again, you know, you, ha you, the rider, have to be in balance and the horse has to be in balance also. So interpreting, you know, these two easy jumps with a stride, uh, as well as in the turns, you know, using some show jumping dressage to really work the horse work uh, on his balance, on where his shoulder placement is, on where his hind legs are, but also on, on your um, body weight. You know, sometimes we think uh, it's the horse that's leaning in, but it's because our body weight isn't exactly centered. So working, you know, uh, on these two different things to be able to really, uh, you know, pick the pick the, the little things and, and work on the little things that in the end, you know, allow you to be more successful in the course is what I think, or at least for me, uh, has been the key um, to really, you know, nail the little differences that then, you know, will make up the, the big hole and the horse will be ready for, for anything then in the big courses. Okay, give me some details. Um, six meters in between, I see. Um, the verticals, how high do you jump them normally? Uh, for sure, not big. I would start with, uh, I don't know, 80, 90 centimeters, build it up maybe to one meter, one meter ten. It's not about the height. It's about, you know, the concentration of coming to the verticals and then turning either sharp after the verticals or coming sharp to them. You know, it's really, as I said, about the turn and the, and the approach and the way you ride the tight circle to these two jumps. What, what you, you spoke about uh, Silverstone, who, that jumped his exercise quite a lot. What yeah. did you want to improve on him? What did he do? What was not going perfectly? What did you want to improve with him? Uh, with, with him, I really worked on the turn uh, after the jump. So I would, you know, ride into the two verticals. And as I would be jumping out the second vertical, I would, you know, put my body weight inside. I would turn, but I would really, you know, focus on putting my inside, le inside leg on, uh, having my outside hand to stabilize him and ask him to really, you know, bend in the turn, but at the same time, push, you know, push with his hind legs and create a lot of energy, but on a small stride, you know, to get him to close down and, and be round and use his back muscles, use his stomach muscles. Uh, use his, you know, hind legs to really work in the turn so that then when I ask him to make a, a short turn, maybe to a taller vertical in a, in a jump off, he would already have the memory of, you know, putting his weight back, going through the turn and then getting ready to jump the jump. Um, just to give our viewers a bit of an idea, um, how often would you jump this in one session? And how many, would you repeat those sessions regularly uh, every week or per week? 
Uh, per, week, per week, I would say, you know, you can use this exercise once a week or even twice a week with every horse. It depends how old the horse is. Um, uh, if you want to be jumping more or less with him, if it's an older horse, you don't want to be jumping with the horse all the time. You know, you want him to be excited to work, excited to compete. Um, so it really depends at what stage um, of your partnership and of, of the horse's career you're at. Um, and for sure, when I would do this exercise, I would repeat it many times. It's not about doing it, you know, two times uh, perfectly, but it's about doing it from the left side, from the right side, giving the horse a nice break, maybe doing something else, maybe doing a little bit of, uh, um, you know, movement going forwards, going backwards, and then coming back to the exercise. Um, repetition is, is never a bad thing to do, I think, when it comes to these small gymnastics, this, this small type of uh, show jumping dressage, because it doesn't tire the horse, it doesn't, uh, you know, you're not using extreme amounts of push like you would um, maybe when jumping a 160 oxer. So doing these little things, I think, helps, helps a lot also for their concentration. Super. Thank you very much. The, the whole explanation of, um, of this exercise is very elaborate, and I think everybody basically understands what you want to say and what this uh, this could be uh, could be good for thank you for giving us uh, some uh, some insights thank you very much also for sitting down because i think you're sitting on the floor aren't you yes i am, <laughs> I am. <laughs> thank you for wanting to sit down with us taking the time uh, i know you just finished riding um but i do appreciate that you took the time to talk to us and give us an update on your situation in prague on the gc playoffs uh, on your horses, on Jessica, on your partnership, on your relationship, um, and on the goals for um, 2021. Can't wait um, to hand you that microphone, maybe after another victory in the Global Champions League, or who knows, in the launching Global Champions 2 Grand Prix. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was really nice talking to you. Thank Super. you very much. And to you at home, once again, and as always, thank you very much for watching, also for taking the time and for getting in touch with us through Facebook, through Instagram, through all the social media channels. We do appreciate that you stay with us um, throughout this uh, off-season of Global Champions League and launching Global Champions Tour. Keep an eye out on our social media channels for everything that is coming at you from Valkenspart. And for now, stay safe and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.